Um, now, it has a thing called Prompt Enhance in the left. Now, we want to be using Prompt Enhancing um, with Phoenix because it's really clever and smart and works very well. You can turn it off if you feel that um, it's not giving you exactly what you want. You can turn it off, but I would recommend having Automatic on. Um, you can then choose which kind of like preset style you want from this drop-down menu. So if you're wanting to have still this like cinematic effect or if you're wanting to have illustration or if you want to have, um, gosh, I don't know, portraiture or anything like that, you can pick it from here. Um, and that's kind of the beginning. Um, you'll see when you go into advanced settings where which model you're using, and that's obviously got Phoenix on. Something to note, um, photo reel can't work with Phoenix right now. Um, that doesn't matter, like the, the image is still amazing, but that will you will be getting a different um look from this from Phoenix versus um from the other models, but that's kind of the point. Um, okay, cool. So for for this basic um workflow, I'm just gonna go trying to remember what my previous ones were. So I've pre <laughs> pre done a lot of these. So I'm just going to quickly check my um, collections. This is where I store a lot of the work that I like. Uh, it's a really helpful way of working just to be quite, um, yeah, just copy things down. Okay, so I'm going to go and go, um, so an orange, an orange juice com a commercial. So how about I'll go um, a... Photo, a photograph of a glass of juice, um, a glass of orange juice, orange juice for an orange juice commercial with the text orange juice. <laughs> okay. Now, this is a very, very basic prompt that I've written. Previously, when I use different models, I will use this kind of like imprompt, imp uh, improve prompt feature. With Phoenix, because it's got prompt enhance on, I'm just going to let it go and see where it kind of takes me with this um, because I do really quite trust it. Um, so if we have a look at some of the ones which I was making as they load through, um, this is the kind of like generic output that I've got, which is, I mean, it's great. Like you use these for any type of ad. It looks very like product photography. Um, and so that basic message, the basic prompt that I wrote, it did this with the a smart one and I'll just run this as well in, while it's going. Um, okay. What I want to show you, it's more interesting is this ability to take it from an orange juice to an apple juice, right? <laughs> it's quite a cool different feature. Um, and this is all hidden in this button here. So, um, I'm not sure if you can see, let me zoom in. Okay. See this little like pencil with a magic wand? That is your new best friend that is called Edit with AI. Um, sorry, guys, my internet's been a bit rough today. Um, okay, cool. So this is where we've got this like basic um, image. That's my first attempt. Great. Um, to me, it's fine. It could do a lot more and be a lot more fun. So I'm going to press this Edit with AI feature. Now, what is different is if I go and be generating up here at the very top, it's going to regenerate every single time. It's going to try and attempt it again and again and again. Whereas if I am using this edit with AI, it's going to it's going to take the seed from this image to to re, to remake new stuff. So pretty much what it's it's going to be building upon the image that we already have created and building upon that. Whereas if I start at the very top, is you starting in from scratch. So I quite like this one. I think that one's kind of fine. Um, I'm going to go. Um, I don't know what if we want to add to it. Um, I'm gonna say more. So these are very basic the when you talk to this. So you as simple like change the coat, make it this, add it to blue, add dramatic lighting. Um, so it's a very conversational um chat. So I'm gonna say um uh, make the kitchen make the kitchen feel more warm and homely. Um a love like a loving loving messy family kitchen home gosh I don't know something like that um okay so this will be cool to be able to get the difference between something that's quite sterile I'm like okay I want this actually to feel more full of life and love um but as you like these the the I can also articulate what kind of font choices I want um so as that loads let me just show you some of these other ones which I was playing with in terms of font so um you can articulate what kind of font you're trying to achieve, like whether it's block letters, whether it's cursive. Um, I wanted, we'll go make this one next, but with, with these, like I wanted to make sure that the letters maintained this cursive nature while replicating like the orange rind. Um, and so I said the word orange in cursive romantic text made out of dried orange skin 
blah, blah, blah. Um, so, yeah, he's quite articulate with what we're going for. Um, okay. So you'll notice that we still have the same product photography, but now it's in a different scene. So it's it knows that I've liked where we started and now it's trying to give me other versions of that. So if we have a look at these back and forth side by side, like that is quite, um, yeah, it's quite cool. It's been able to maintain the, the actual focus ele element. Um, and then if we wanted to say instead um, make the font... Um, make the font um, um, like I don't know, more. Make the font more bold um, with a white outline on the orange letters. See how that looks. Um, okay, cool. So let me just remember how I might go steal my prompt from one of these early ones, so we can make it in real time. Um, Okay, so let's go make this other version. So I want, I was like thinking I wanted to make this a quite interesting campaign. So I wrote the word orange juice in a cursive romantic text made out of dried orange skin. Um, and I think I said, yeah, it was like a hyper detailed, like resembling a high end advertisement or something like that. Um, now I'm going to put it on cinematic for this because I want it to have like quite like photo realism with the, um, with the, with the orange skin rides. So we'll just quickly run that. Um, I'm battling with downstairs internet, so <laughs> wait with me. Um, okay. And then as those run as well, I just want to have a look at these different types of like photography that we can create. Now these are incredibly dynamic images. Um, and I think that's something that, uh, Phoenix is really, really excellent with is this high intensity dynamic feeling. Um, so with this, when I was ideating on some ideas, like it started with this almost like tennis, this like tennis campaign of like how we could create this. Um, and these were just by prompting like a generic design. So a dynamically energized advertising image featuring an isometric orange fruit pattern pops against the background. Blah, blah, blah. So I think these were really quite fun. Um, okay. Is that loading okay brilliant and we've got these different results so like this is previously like making something like this would have been so hard in the sense of like you either physically would have had to like make make that out of like an orange ride or you would have had to do some like 3d software and then apply these textures and then get the lighting right and all of that like it's very very complex whereas with the tool like phoenix it's absolutely phenomenal how it can just rapidly churn this stuff out 